Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about a very, very important project that happened way back in the late 19th century. This was a project uh, commenced by the then Governor General of India, Lord Canning, uh, in an attempt to kind of put his name in the annals of history and posterity. He wanted to do a full documentation of the people of India. Now, some of the backdrop to this is quite interesting because initially, uh, when the British were approaching the Indian subcontinent and the, the customs and traditions of the people, they fo focused on social issues like uh, child marriage, like sati and things like that. The 1858-1857 mutiny period actually exposed them to some of the finer intricacies of social order in India, including the caste system and the varying population groupings. And this led to the desire to capture that variation. And uh, while Lord Canning commenced this, it was actually com completed uh, a while after his death in 1862. Um, this was completed by two people who jointly authored it. It was Forbes and Kay. Uh, Forbes was a surgeon in India and then was appointed the head of the India Museum in London. And Kay was a historian. And between the two, they led this initiative. Of course, Forbes was assisted by Briggs in trying to finish this. This particular effort had eight volumes and is reputed to have compiled 468 different people of India. And in the eight volumes, uh, you see uh, this is volume one, which was actually bought out in 1868. This is volume two. And of course, uh, as with some of these things, it's a challenge to lay your hands on all the completed volumes. We at Sarmaya have got these two volumes which are intact. We've got four more volumes where certain photographs are missing. And I will show you a few which are in the form of loose photos. Uh, this is, you know, such a useful reference guide. Uh, if we kind of keep aside some of the context and if we keep aside some of the purposes for which it was actually made back in the time, uh, we have a very good reference document, not only for the dress, the lifestyle, it's also got a certain uh, social and historical and anthropological write-up. So the format in the book is very useful. It has a write-up and it has an image on the facing page. And that's useful because uh, when you're talking about 468 such images, uh, to have a write-up, and especially in today's context when a lot of these uh, people have in the process of our homogenization uh, been subsumed into larger population numbers. Of course, two exercises similar were conducted in 1908 and then 1992. And the 1992 actually captures in greater detail and has about 4,000 uh, subgroups of people of India. Uh, but for the time that this was done, this was indeed a seminal work. So, you know, the story of the people of India uh, is not fully told till I tell you the story of how these are collected. Uh, imagine that you have eight volumes, very few were actually published and they were spread all over the world and are held in completeness in very few collections. Uh, we don't have the complete set of course and uh, while we have almost 75% of the original 468, uh, we've been lucky to get a couple of these uh, volumes intact with their original binding but for the most part it's a very painstaking process of collecting literally bits and pieces so for example here is volume 6 
uh, in which a few photographs are missing and then you kind of hunt individually for photos and you see this particular one this is the todas and this photo sometimes will come sans the write up and sometimes you will get the write up but without the photo and you spread the word on locating either and so it is uh, a, a, a wonderful collector's chase so to speak uh, gathering up these eight volumes so i'm still at it hopefully someday i will complete it but at this point we have two volumes completed four volumes for the most part completed and some others in loose format